on, hold on. G'day guys, DCS 2.5 has brought a new weather module and of course the Hornet which has no ILS. You may be wondering on how to get down below the weather to land at the airport. Today we're flying a 2 OCU bird and the clouds are approximately 600 feet above ground level and I'll show you how to get down using some cold attack and approach. There are four steps to any instrument approach. Starting off with the setup, intercepting the approach, flying down using the instruments, breaking visual and landing. So let's go ahead and jump into the cockpit and set up for the approach. First thing I'm going to need to do is prepare by getting a chart. I've got one off flightaware.com which I'll have a link for in the description below. We're doing the TACAN X-ray runway 2 one left approach. And it's going to also be found using your kneeboard by pressing right shift K and left square bracket until the appropriate chart is up. Let's have a closer look at how to read this chart. So at the top right we've got the name TACAN X-ray runway 2 one left. And in the middle section we have the diagram which is sort of like a bird's eye view of what it looks like. It shows us our distances and our levels that we need to be at for every point. We can see that the approach starts at a waypoint called Cut Me which is the initial approach fix. And it's at 21 miles from the tack end. Looking over at the airport we can see some essential information such as Nellis, its ident code and channel 12. Just 12 means that it's X-ray, otherwise Yankee would be specified. Right below that we have a vertical depiction of the chart and we can see basically a vertical profile. We also notice that there is a 3.41 degree glide slope all the way down to touchdown point. Now the next thing to consider is our minima which is the point where we have to descend to and if we can't see the runway at that point then we need to go around. So the aircraft are CAT-C aircraft, so moving along to the right to the C category, we see our minimum is 2,460 feet above mean sea level, which also roughly gives us about 590 feet above the ground. Now conveniently the clouds are set to on this server to about 610 feet, so this is going to be a fun approach. Finally, if we go back up to the very top right, we can see the missed approach and the instructions will be to climb to 15000, intercept the Nellis TACAN radial 210 to 2.5 DME and a climbing right turn heading 020 to join the TACAN 358 until the waypoint ARCO. We'll hold there and continue to climb to 15000, wait for ATC. We start off by taking a look at the TACAN on the HSI right now we've got nothing so we can fix that by pressing the TACAN button on the UFC then hold down the on off button for about half a second clear out the current TACAN and type in 1, 2 and enter we can now see we've got details on the top left of our HSI and if we box TACAN and adjust our scale we'll be able to see a little TACAN symbol on the HSI Hold down the course switch for a couple of seconds until course select comes up on the UFC. We'll type in 210 to get our course as per the chart. We can now see that on the HSI and it's reflected in the HUD with a course steering line and a distance to Nellis which is 42.7 right now. What we can then do if we have the time is get an ident of the tack end station. To do this go ahead and look at your left console and find the tack end knob and turn it up to about halfway so we'll get a tone from that. Looking at the chart we'll identify the Morse code to make sure we've got the correct ident. Now that we're all set up for the approach with our instruments, the last thing we want to do is start taking a look at the intercept. So if you notice we're currently flying heading 270 at 10,000 feet. Now the starting altitude is 8,800 at cut me which means we can be at that level or above it and most likely ATC will give us a descent instruction. So we're flying heading 270 which offsets us about 60 degrees and ideally you want to be intercepting uh, instrument courses anywhere between 30 to 45 degrees. Obviously the shallower the intercept the closer you're going to intercept to the field. Now one thing I forgot to mention is if you're flying as lead or just number one by yourself you can look at the heading select on your HSI which is at the bottom left the courses on the right and the headings on the left using the heading 
switch, we can then adjust that the exact same way we adjusted the core select switch. And so right now I'm on autopilot flying heading 270. Maple 15 position, 30 miles northeast of Nellis, turn left heading 255, descend to 8800 until established on the 210 radial. Clear TAC and X ray runway 21 left approach at 10 TAC and contact Nellis Tower, stud 1. Left heading 255, uh, descend to 8800, clear TAC and approach 10 TAC and contact t Nellis Tower, stud 1. Maple 15. So what we've got there, if you don't have ATC, is we got our instruction to descend to 8800. We're cleared for the approach, and also a left turn heading 255. Now if we notice that 255 gives us exactly 45 degrees, and that's our sweet intercept angle for the TAC and course. Taking a look at the HUD right now, we see that the course line is starting to creep in. And as it gets closer, we'll start monitoring that and we want to start turning left to heading 210. As you see, I've also leveled off at 8000 here. And as that line goes anywhere between the first dot to the right and your velocity vector, you want to start turning. So start a gradual turn. And when it touches the outside of your velocity vector, then you want to do a full bank in to that heading 210. As you can see here, it's better to turn earlier because I started turning a little bit later and we can see we've still got 10 degrees to go and the line has passed through the velocity vector indicating that we're to the right of course. So I've now gone on ahead and turned left further to 200 to try and get back on course. The line started moving back to the center of the velocity vector so I'm now turning right back to 210 which is our final approach course. So now I'm paying attention to the TACN or DME remaining and right now we're about 22 miles and looking at the chart at 21 miles we can begin our descent to 5000. So following this we want to have a 3.41 degree glide slope going down. So this is relatively simple, the velocity vector we're just going to put the velocity vector down to anywhere between 3 to 4 degrees on our HUD. So as you can see I've begun my descent and I'm placing the velocity vector anywhere between 3 to 4 degrees. Because I started a little bit later I went here and just went straight to 4 degrees. Now this is the problem with a non-precision approach. So if we had an ILS going right now this would be okay because we would have the vertical guidance. But without that vertical guidance we sort of have to eyeball it, watch our chart, see where we should be at the next DME and altitude. So I'm just looking here to be ideally at 5000. So we're now entering a cloud which makes us IMC or instrument flight conditions basically and it's crucial to be paying attention to your instruments and only your instruments. Don't try looking around too much trying to find the ground yet, just look at your instruments and fly down to the minima. We're now approaching that 13 mile point which we want to be at 5000. I'm currently a little bit high here but it's better to be high because the altitude is at or above 5000. It's always safe to be on the high side than the low side. Next, I'm starting to plan for the next waypoint, which is Jenna. And that's going to be at 4,400 at 7 DME. So I've got approximately 6 miles to descend to 4,400. So I'm not really stressing too much about that descent rate. From this point, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video. The other important thing to know is that line in the middle of the velocity vector, the course steering line. As it comes to the left, it means we are too far to the right of course. So here I'm starting to do a slight left turn and it's come back to the middle. If the line was on the right Altitude. side of your velocity vector, Altitude. you'd need to come to the right to re-intercept. So I'm now approaching that 7 uh, DME mark and I've noticed I've only got 100 feet to go so I've started pulling up here to prevent descending through that level. It's important that you're adhering to these level restrictions because you don't know if there's going to be a mountain right below you. It's the worst part about the instrument flight. So now that we're within 10 miles we want to be idling our power and bring it back below 250 knots. So I've gone ahead and dropped the landing gear there once we've gone below 250 and flap set to full. 
I'm now looking at the next waypoint, which we want to be 3200 at 3.8 DME. And so I've begun my descent again. With all of the landing gear checks and preparations, it's distracted me a little bit, and I've now become a little bit high on the profile. Within 5 miles, you really want to start looking at getting close to on speed. Uh, like I said, it's a bit better to be fast whilst you're in the IMC than struggling to keep altitude. So as we're speeding things up, we're looking for our level and always keeping that number in mind of that 2590. We want to be following the core steering line here and keeping that descent going. Now, as you, you can see, I've gone above profile, so I've tried to raise the descent rate. And we're about to break visual, hopefully, in a couple hundred feet here. This is the most crucial time to make sure that you're flying close to on speed and on the actual steering line. The closer you get to the nav aid, the bigger the corrections you're going to need to make. Alright, so we're now visual of the runway. Runway 21 left is on the left side. So I've had to add power as we came right on profile and I'm joining in visually here. The other solution to breaking visual would potentially be to do a circling approach. So if we were to break visual and add a profile, a tower might be able to authorize us to join like a left downwind below the cloud and land from that position. So now that we're down on the ground, we're putting the speed brakes out and applying our light braking, and we've made it down in the minimum conditions. I hope you found this tutorial of help. I haven't seen too many on YouTube, and if you'd like to see more like these, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Cheers.